Recently at the Gist of Freedom, we had the opportunity to interview Professor Deborah Willis from New York University. We had an opportunity to talk to her about her life, how she got started in this industry and what she loves so much about it. We also got an opportunity to hear about the many books that she has either participated in or written. You will learn about people at Gordon Parks and other people who are in African American photography that we often don't hear about. I hope you enjoy this interview as much as I did. So I'm, I'm thrilled to be here with Professor Deborah Willis from NYU Tisch School of the Arts. And I wanted to start off, as I always do, with getting a little bit about your background. I know that you were raised in Philadelphia. Uh, and then very interestingly, I saw that your father was named Thomas Willis, and then you married a guy named Hank Thomas. Mm -hmm. So Thomas, the name Thomas runs in your family quite yes, deeply. Yes. So talk about your upbringing in Philadelphia that inspired your artwork. So I grew up in Philadelphia, um, studied photography in Philadelphia. My father was very active in, in the community as, act, as a, um, someone who took a lot of photographs, but his, his cousin had a photographic studio. So I grew up around a lot of images. My neighbor was his best friend, his name was Jack Franklin. He also was, he had a, he was like the kind of the, the photojournalist for the black press. The Philadelphia Inquirer, the Scoop um, newspaper. So he documented a lot of the black entertainment and political life in Philadelphia. And so I grew up with images and photographs a lot. And then my mom had a beauty shop. So imagery was central to me and I was constantly looking. I also, growing up in the beauty shop, we also had Time Magazine, Look Magazine, and Ebony. So we had all of the magazines and Jet to reading. I was always looking at ways how photo stories were told. And Gordon Parks um, transformed me in terms of looking at a black photographer um, in, the, in these big magazines. And then also Roy D. Carava, um, his book with Langston Hughes, A Sweet Fly Paper of Life. So all of those were part of my life and growing up. And I knew. Um, early on that I wanted to be a photographer. And I studied photography at the Philadelphia College of Art. And studying photography at that time, because I grew up around photographers, I was curious in my naive way of asking the question, where are the black photographers in my photography books? And my professor said, um, oh, maybe you should do a, a project about it. And so my project that I started in 1972 is a project that continues to this day that I'm still seeking and identifying um, black photographers who I feel have been missing from the larger narrative of, of the story documenting um, black culture mm -hmm. uh, worldwide. And um, after graduating from Philadelphia College of Art, I went to grad school at Pratt. Same story, um, the same narrative of, of looking at um, black people as subjects, but never behind the camera. And I eventually, um, in the 70s, I visited the Schomburg Center for Research in Black Culture, which was my, you know, kind of growing up real graduate school situation. Life at that time as a young student interested in looking for ways to tell a visual story. Mm. So, yeah, so when I arrived at Schomburg, um, they had in terms of research, um, I found a lot of black photographers by going through the folders, by reading the names of the photographers. After grad school and, and at Pratt, I ended up finding a job at the Schomburg Center as, as a photo specialist. They, it, was, it was my ideal job. It was made for me. I was you know, young and interested in looking at the images and, and telling the story. Of, um, of the black photographers. Not only the work of other photographers, but I really wanted to look at ways of telling the story. And as a result of my undergraduate paper that I created back in 1974, um, um, a wonderful man by the name of Richard Newman called me up. He was a publisher. And he said, how would you like to do a book on black photographers? And I said, oh, I have a project in undergraduate language. Wow. If you're interested in reading my paper, because I wrote to Monita Sleet, who worked for Ebony Magazine, 
I wrote for Morgan and Marvin Smith, who had studio studios in Harlem and in Harlem on uh, 125th Street. I wrote to Gordon Parks. I wrote to I wrote to all of them, and asking for an interview. Um, Anthony Barboza, Chester Higgins, and all of them said yes. And so I had a chance to meet all of the photographers at that time. And Richard Newman contacted me. He read my paper. He said, okay, let's do a, a bio-bibliography of black, black photographers. And I, so I pulled all of the photographs that I could find at the Schomburg, looking at my list of photographers. And, and so this is, this is not a, you know, it was just a way of, as an artist, doing research and gathering materials. And that's how I began the project mm -hmm. and continued through... Um, through this time period of Reflections in Black. Yeah. In creating Reflections in Black, um, uh, I decided I wanted to go to grad school again and get a um, PhD in cultural studies. In between, I had a, a master's in museum studies at City. So um, with the research that I was creating as, as, a, as a PhD student, I wanted to create a story uh, not only about the photographers, but you know, write about their images and, and see how their images transform communities worldwide. Mm -hmm. And I um, had the opportunity to meet um, a wonderful agent and who also introduced my book to Norton. And there goes the history of, of that right. long period. And then um, the, I created an exhibition at the Smithsonian uh, on this topic. and. The exhibition traveled for about four years, and as it traveled around the country, there were people asking me, well, is there going to be a film about this? How can we see the ex exhibit after it closed? And, and then I approached, in 2006, I approached um, Thomas Allen Harris to see if he'd be interested in working with me on creating a film on reflections of black, on black photographers. And he had just, finished a number of projects that related to photography using the still image and he um, he was really happy to join me in this this quest mm -hmm. uh, you mentioned Gordon Parks uh, and it reminded me of a quote that he had I won't do it justice uh, but he was using photography as a way to combat the hatred mm -hmm. uh, that he experienced in life and saw in life and and it reminds me of the the activist piece to art uh, and a lot of people don't m put those two together. They, they do their artwork and they focus on their work, but very few take that in an activist approach, and you've done that with some of your work. Mm -hmm. Talk about why you feel the need, or is that natural, the infusion of uh, activism in your work? Um, I, I just find it just as, as a natural. Um, the, I think storytelling is really active. My, my son is Hank Willis Thomas. Mm -hmm. He is a photographer who grew up around images, and he grew up um, looking at the image that Ernest Withers created, I Am a Man with the Garbage Men Strike, and then Hank created, you know, a project, you know, of like this, um, you know, you know, making a project um, called I Am, Amen, you know, based on that, looking at that image, and then also looking at the images of, of how commodity culture has transformed black men. That So his work is about looking and being active. And thinking about that, um, so making art to me is um, a part of my community and it's collective and it's really significant. It's, it's funny you ask that question because we also, Hank and I created, curated a show, and I'll give you this so you can take this, called uh, Social in Practice, The Art of Collaboration. And we really believe that in making art, it is about collaborating with communities and, 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 and making a change. I want to talk a little about, if you can, mention uh, something about James Van Der Zee, mm -hmm. uh, because uh, we try to be educational with the programming that we produce, and a lot of people don't know James Van Der Zee, and they should. Uh, so can you talk a little bit about him and his mm -hmm. background? So James Van Der Zee is a photographer that I also met in, in the early 80s and had the opportunity to interview him and also published a book of his work in, in, in 1990, 1993. 
And so James Vanderzee Van Der um, moved to Harlem in, the 19, in 1915 and created a studio there. Um, his photographs basically documented um, many of the black people who lived in the community, but also people who migrated from the South and from the Caribbean to the Harlem community. And so his, as a studio photographer, he was looking for a way of documenting the success and the progress of, of people who moved there, but also the beauty. And, mm. and he created scenarios of family life and made photographs about, about lives with their lives within the Harlem community. Um, he lived until, uh, until, I guess he was in his 90s, I think. Wow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And his studio was one of the largest studios in, in the community. He's known also for photographing Marcus Garvey and um, the U Universal Negro Improvement Association. And his, he was hired in 1924 um, at that time to document Marcus Garvey's um, activities. Great. There was a project that um, the Studio Museum has the, has the Van Der Zee collection. But there's also a project with expanding the walls. There's a high school program there that the students look at a Van Der Zee photograph and try to recreate it in Harlem in a, in a contemporary way. So it's oh, wow. really great. The high school program that the Studio Museum has, we have one here at Tisch, um, a summer high school program and a, and a Saturday program. And it's really a fascinating thing to see young people, you know, starting, begin their interest, not only with the selfie image, you know, like I'm here, I'm present, and I'm a part of the world, but also in, in, it helps and enables um, artists who are interested in exploring their own art form to start making photographs about their ideas. And, and then um, I really believe in having a, an education in photography too. It's not just, oh, I can pick up a camera and I can make this. Um, but you need a community to talk about your photographs so that you can have a critical discussion about the images you're making and not just you know, making them and consuming them and you know, but there should be some kind of exchange. Mm -hmm. Is there a particular project that's something that's in the back of your mind that you would love to do if you had the opportunity? Yeah, there is. Um, there, there are two projects I I just started photographing in boxing gyms, um, mainly because they're um, I photograph bodybuilders and I, I love the way that people who are use their body as their temple, use the body as a way of you know, affirming their, um, their power or feel, feeling empowered because there's so many people who are disempowered because of body images. And I, I love, I, would, I just want to continue photographing in that realm of people um, looking at their bodies and, and understanding the beauty that they're presenting. So beauty is something that I'm interested in exploring. Not the beautiful, but just beauty. Beauty is, is something that is um, something that needs to be a part of our lives every day, and that's something that I want to uh, document. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, just one last question. Um, when you were starting out as a young child thinking about photographs, did you think that it would bring you here to Tish, being the dean? No, I'm, I'm sorry, chair. being the chair of the, <laughs> department. Chair of the department. No, I actually wanted to be a photojournalist. <laughs> And um, and I um, I was stopped because of racism, you know. Mm. That, you know, I, I graduated with the same degrees with my colleagues, and I brought my portfolios to the Newsweek and Time and places and said, "Well, oh, here here's my work." And and they said, "Oh, well, come back in three months. Bring your portfolio back in three months." And I'd go back in three months, and you know, no one was interested in mm. what I what I wanted to do. And so it really was a very disappointing moment for me, but at the same time, I knew I had another story to tell, which was the story of black photographers, so it worked out. Right, you know. and getting through that, that was courage, perseverance, faith. Faith, you know, faith to believe that I had a, I had a mission, you know, yeah. That's a great story. Yeah. I never thought about it again. <laughs> After, this is the first time I thought about this since 1975. Oh wow, oh wow. <laughs> yeah. Well, I appreciate you taking some time out of your day to, to speak with me. Great. Uh, and, I, and I think there's a lot of lessons that a lot of people can take away from what you said today. Oh, great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.